Charlotte Hall, Protecting the Past. When you hear the words history in Arizona, what comes to mind? Is it a dinosaur roaring? Or two cowboys about to get into a gunfight? Hello, my name is Misty and I'm going to take you on a brief journey to the past. I'm going to share with you some history and tell you why it's important to preserve the past to save it for our future generations. I will show you an historic site and at the end I hope that you'll be motivated to protect the past in a similar way that Charlotte Hall was able to. This is Charlotte Hall. She was born on October 27th, 1870. Her family moved to the Arizona Territory in 1882. She was a woman ahead of her time. She saw the need to save Arizona's history. The territory had been founded in 1863 and by 1900, as early settlers died, their possessions were lost, along with their stories. There was also widespread looting of Arizona's spectacular Indian ruins to supply the Eastern market with Indian relics. To save what she could, she began to collect both Native American and pioneer material. As early as 1907, Charlotte Hall planned to develop a museum for her collections. On June 20, 1927, she agreed to move her extensive collection of artifacts and documents in the old governor's mansion and open it as a museum on June 11th the following year. She signed a contract to house these items in Arizona's 1864 governor's mansion and to operate it as a public museum. She passed away April 9, 1943. This four-acre campus that is tucked away on a corner here in Prescott, Arizona, has 11 exhibit buildings, eight of which are historic. This is a snapshot of the past when trains still stopped here. When you see this locomotive, do you hear the whistle of the train as it pulls into the station? What about this wind turbine? Here in the US, we call them windmills. It was used to pump water up from deep underground. As you can see in these permanent exhibits, business was thriving. Here we have the print shop. The blacksmith is not in. Would you like to buy some sugar or flour? Or perhaps some candy? The ranch house. It was built in 1936 under Charlotte Hall's supervision. The idea was that visitors could experience what it was like to live as an early settler. As you can see, the accommodations are pretty sparse. Can you imagine what these walls have seen and heard? Ah, uh, Fort Misery. Aptly named due to the owner's awful cooking abilities, it is the oldest surviving log cabin in Arizona. It was built in 1863 and has served as a store, boarding house, and law office. The schoolhouse, built in 1961, this replica really gives us a sense of the times. Can you imagine sitting here with your slate, eager to learn something new? I can. This historic building is named for Charlotte Hall. It was built in 1936 and was home to Charlotte Hall herself. Inside, the exhibits tell the story of Prescott. The dioramas here depict mining, military, Indian conflicts, railroads, and even pioneer life. As I stated earlier, Charlotte really wanted to protect these relics and artifacts for future generations. They are important and a reminder of where we have come from and are a link to the past.
This diorama depicts the Yavapai Prescott Indian tribe. The history and culture are explored here along with some beautiful examples of hand-woven baskets. The staff is getting the ready for Christmas. Our next historic building is a Fremont House. It was built in 1875. John Charles Fremont, the fifth territorial governor, and his wife Jessie and daughter Lily rented it as a residence for $90 per month from 1878 to 1881. The home quickly became the governor's mansion in every sense of the word, given Jessie's guidance and attention to detail. The windows were hung with heavy brocade curtains and the thick red carpeting covered the floors. A hand-carved oak fireplace imported from Scotland was installed and ornate kerosene lamps made of brass and hand-painted glass trimmed with crystal lit the rooms. There is even art made from human hair. The largest sticker historic building in the governor's mansion. It was built in 1864 and stands in its original location, called a mansion because it was very of scale and permanent compared to the shanties and tents of the time. It escaped demolition because of Charlotte Hall, who repurposed the building, installed her collections of historic artifacts, founded the gubernatorial mansion museum, and opened its doors to the public in 1928. What do you feel as you walk through these rooms and see these items? Would you protect them? Will they be around for your children? Or their children? The transportation building. Inside is an amazing collection of bicycles, wagons, stagecoaches, and automobiles. I don't know about you, but I want to take some of them for a spin. The Lawler Exhibit Center is our final building. To me, it houses the most important artifacts and exhibits. Do you remember the dinosaur and cowboys you saw at the beginning? Once you step inside, you can explore what prehistoric light might have been like and even see some fossils. This was my favorite exhibit, Toys of the Past. We think of toys as something to just play with. In the past, they were often tools, educational items, or weapons. As you have seen and possibly felt a connection to the past, I want to stress the importance of places like this museum. It is important to preserve the past. Not only is it a link to people, but it is also a teacher for all of us now and in the future. I challenge you to do your part to protect the past.